Hello, it's nice to be with you again. We're now talking about the lectionary reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter. It includes Acts 2, 14a, and then skips to verses 36 to 41. This reading, unless carefully explained, will either inculcate or reinforce Jew hatred. In Acts 2, Peter addresses men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, that's Acts 2, 14, and tells them, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. That's Acts 3.36. According to the speech likely composed by Luke, all speeches in Luke-Acts have the same grammatical pattern, and it was common for authors in antiquity to invent what they thought people would say on particular occasions. The Jews, all of them from Judea and its capital, Jerusalem, were responsible for Jesus' death. The Roman governor Pilate, who sentenced Jesus to death, and the Roman soldiers who nailed him to the cross, have disappeared. Luke will sound this theme of Jews as Christ killers again in Acts chapter 3. Here he expands his audience and accuses these men Israelites, Acts chapter 3 verse 12, of having killed the author of life, Acts 3.15. This was the reading for Thursday, April 13th. Finally, although the lectionary does not make the date clear, the scene is set during the Jewish pilgrimage festival of Shavuot. The name comes from the Hebrew word for weeks, and the date is seven weeks, or 49 days, following the Passover. The next date is the 50th, or in Greek, Pentecost. That was, in fact, the name Greek-speaking Jews gave to the holiday of Shavuot. For Jews then and to the present, the holiday commemorates the giving of the Torah by the hand of Moses on Mount Sinai to the Jewish people. Since Peter's speech in Acts 2 follows the notice of what the church calls Pentecost, not the giving of the Torah to Israel, but the descent of the Holy Spirit on the initial followers, Acts threatens to co-opt and thus erase the Jewish festival. Nostra Aetate, the conciliar document from Vatican II promulgated in October 1965, insisted that, quote, what happened in Jesus' passion cannot be charged against all the Jews without distinction, then alive, nor against the Jews of today. The Jews should not be presented as rejected or accursed by God, as if this followed from the Holy Scripture. All should see to it, then, that in catechetical work, or in the preaching of the word of God, they do not teach anything that does not conform to the truth of the gospel and the spirit of Christ, end quote. You who proclaim the readings for the fourth Sunday in Easter are responsible for correcting the possible impressions these readings can give. To educate the congregations, you might note what Vatican II teaches and what the Roman Catholic Church affirms, that the covenant with the Jews remains in place because God does not break covenants. That the Jews cannot alone be responsible for the death of Jesus, since even according to Peter's speech in Acts 2.23, Jesus was killed, quote, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, end quote, and was also, quote, killed by the hands of those outside the law, unquote that it is unlikely that the people in Peter's audience at Pentecost were the same people in Jerusalem 50 days before when the Romans crucified Jesus, and that not all Jews were directly involved in Jesus' death. For example, Luke notes that the daughters of Jerusalem did not kill Jesus, they wept for him. And we might also wonder why the people who created the lectionary found it necessary to include these potentially harmful verses as we saw with the equally problematic verses from Acts chapter 3. Not all texts need to be proclaimed, especially on a Sunday morning. Thanks for listening.